Mr. Simmons. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is William Simmons. I represent Mr. Lovell. How am I doing now? Good. Better. All right. Better. Yeah, you got it. Wait, folks, this room, this, we spent a lot of money to build this building, and it, it's really in pretty good shape, except for the acoustics in the 1824 house is still the acoustics of 1820. <laughs> so if you come to the microphone, please speak up. Testing, testing one, two, three. Good. Chairman, members of the board, my name is William Sims. I represent the petitioner in Little Chapel. Um, with me tonight is Mr. Glenn Trumatori from the Trade Development Services from Virginia Beach Architectural Firm. Uh, Mr. Rich Chabzinski from Atlantic Design, our project engineer. So um, I think as the chairman um, mentioned briefly, my, um, I echo some of the sentiments. My plan tonight was to jump right into our team's presentation. I feel compelled to address some preliminary issues. Uh, first, I know there are no formal uh, published ZBA rules in terms of submissions, um, to, you know, in terms of memoranda, documentation, and so forth. Uh, I know the planning board has recently enacted some of those um, procedures, but I don't think there's anything that the ZBA has done so far that um, requires Lines in terms of that. And as late as uh, yesterday afternoon, I was provided with the same email communication that you got um, you know, from the opponent, which gave me a little or no opportunity to provide any adequate response. Do my best to address some of that stuff tonight, but we um, clearly not enough time um, in putting us at some degree of disadvantage. Uh, in any event, you know, we're prepared to go forward as we have. I provided all our submissions. And um, I'm going to move forward sort of that. Um, and secondly, it's my hope that tonight's hearing will focus on the special permit request filed by the petitioner and will not be derailed with comment and discussion about what may or may not have occurred in subject property over the past several years. Um, two weeks ago, I was here when this board um, unanimously denied the zoning appeal filed by, say, the Pine Barrens uh, Incorporated. Um, looking to um, override the building commissioner's decision. So with that decision, um, I believe that they've effectively removed from the scope of this hearing any discussion relating to alleged earth removal. Um, so we should no longer be going that, down that road and entertaining any further discussions on that particular topic based on this board's decision. In addition, um, I think in the public forum, well as for this board, the planning board, and other members from town government, there's been a lot of misinformation um, proposed and presentations which I think grossly and inaccurately represent and describe the scope of this project. The details about gravel removal, parking, effort for protection, and other matters like sound and finances and activities that preceded the New Hope Chapel's acquisition of the property and are far outside the concern of this board. Uh, for those issues, and within the purview of this hearing and our petition, we will address most, if not all of these issues, um, with hopefully some accurate information for this board to assess and make a, an informed decision. We will present uh, our studies, which have been conducted over years at this point, and um, uh, involved engineers and architects and traffic engineers and enough uh, information so that we feel very, very comfortable presenting to this board some very detailed information which will adequately protect the abutters, the town of Plymouth, the resources of this town, um, the community involving you know, setbacks, open space, parking, and coverage. So at a minimum, I just think that we should not lose focus that the petition for the board seeks Special permit from sections 203 265 of the zone bylaw for earth removal, parking for more than 20 vehicles pursuant to section 2061 in the Act of the Protection District, and also 203 266 for lot of size of proceeding 31 grades. Um, I'll try to cut this down as best I can because I know we have a lot of speakers tonight. Um, but just by way of background and history, 
Um, the New Hope Chapel of Plymouth was founded in 2002 by a small group of families. In 2009, the membership had grown to 250 people, and it, they entered into a lease agreement with the town of Plymouth for the Cura Building, um, which New Hope undertook substantial innovations um, at that time. The church and its congregation continued to grow, um, exceeding over 450 congregants, not of all things up here at one given time, but the membership uh, standing about that number, uh, less count that I have. So the decision was made that the church had to expand, relocate to a larger, more permanent facility within the town of Plymouth to accommodate uh, the constituents and most importantly the Sunday services, in which there are two. It's anticipated that the new location in Joshua's Way will comfortably accommodate all the needs for new home without placing any burden on town services or disruption to the neighborhood. The Sunday services average about 150 attendees in the early morning service, um, and then about 300 in the second service, which takes place about, I believe, around 10.30 in the morning. Uh, the facility will also conduct uh, children's programs on Sunday, and other than maintenance staff, administration, um, the facility will mostly be vacant for most of the week. There would be an average of about, I think, somewhere between 10 and 15 uh, people once or twice a week, things such as worship rehearsals and, and, and such not. Um, as you will hear later on from the architects, um, that there are no doorways or windows in the sanctuary, which is in the center of the building and surrounded. Um, let me see if that's right. Uh, the, uh, it's surrounded by classrooms and offices which will absorb the sound and lighting, so anything emanating from the building will be absolutely minimal. In August of 2020, New York Chapel purchased the 18 plus acres, as you've seen here on Joshua's Way, uh, in an effort to develop the site to construct the structure of the new church. It's important to note that this site was originally designed for five lot subdivision, fully approved by this town. Um, and permitted and partially cleared prior to the New Hope Chapel location. Um, this property, as you know, is in the RI district. Um, the original application, which was submitted in October of 2021, called for construction of a 53,689 square foot building with uh, 365 parking spaces and seating for 1,350 congregants and the associated removal of 302,000 cubic yards of gravel over approximately two years, I, I best I could call the initial application, which I was not involved with. Um, however, um, doing their best efforts to meet with the uh, abutters and other concerned citizens, um, the church went back to their engineers and their architects, um, understanding the concerns of the the volume and size of the church, and they redesigned the entire project. Um, a new petition, the, the original petition was actually withdrawn, and a new petition was filed with radically changing everything. The new, the new plan development now includes the construction of the church down to 26,618 square feet, I believe, uh, with only 787 seats. We're still including the classrooms, bathrooms, nursery, um, worship area, offices, and storage. Uh, plan use facility includes Sunday only worship for the congregation. During the week, again, there'll be very limited use of the facility. There'll be occasional Bible study, which includes maybe 10 or 12 members. Uh, maintenance staff and a few others will be on site. The, administ the administrative offices are planned to remain at 89 Court Street. There will be occasional planned events which will be held indoors on very limited occasions. The tents will be substantially less than the Sunday church services. For example, the church holds a vacation Bible school, attended by less than 100 little kids for four nights. Um, seating in the church, as I mentioned, has been reduced to 787 from the original plan of 1,350. Parking spaces reduced to 360. And in compliance with the number of seats, not 780, that is being counted by some of the opponents again, some more information. Uh, ground removal has been scaled back from the original number I quoted to 68,606 plus or minus cubic yards to remove over a period of approximately six months, but I've been told by my engineers that it will be substantially less than six months with that number. Um, uh, 
Um, when reviewing the RRs, we only the parents together, you can see that not only does the project meet the requirements, but far exceeds them. All of our numbers um, exceed the, the numbers in those tables, uh, including you know, dimensional and, uh, and intensity requirements, subject only special permitting, and requested additional relief. So most importantly, or as part of the presentation tonight, I think it's um, important and progress is very better recognized that this case falls under both the federal and state regulations, the federal being the uh, what's known as Blue the Religious Land Use and Utilized Persons Act of 2000, and of course, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 3, known as the Dover Amendment, which was acted somewhere around 1950, I believe. Um, these statutes, as I believe everybody is well aware, um, provide that religious, farming, child care, and educational uses are exempt from local zoning regulations. The statute provides, among other things, that no zoning ordinance or law, bylaw, regulate the restricted use of land or structures for religious purposes, provided, however, that such land or structures may be subject to reasonable regulations concerning the bulk, height of structures, determining yard size of lot area setbacks, open space, parking, and building permit requirements. Further, excuse me, once again, uh, the federal law requires that permit granting authorities use, and I quote, the least prescriptive means possible to address issues with proposed construction. So the special permit granting authority, which is the zoning board, um, cannot over-regulate this regard. This would apply to any proposed conditions for the granting special permit. So if the special permit is granted uh, and conditions are imposed, they can't over-regulate those particular conditions. It has to be something reasonable um, under both federal and state law. So notwithstanding the foregoing, um, it is our position that the claim presented by the petitioner is thoughtfully and strategically designed to provide local impact on town resources, neighbors, and unlike the already approved five law subdivisions, which can significantly uh, impact town services and resources by adding five large and independent septic systems and increasing the water supply, and obviously substantially less open space set aside. Um, so, in general, I think the site of this particular facility is far more attractive than what would have been five lot subdivision when it comes to taxing uh, town resources and abutting neighbors. So in preparation for tonight's meeting, we research cases relating to Chapter 48 which would um, be of some benefit. Unfortunately, there is very little out there um, which you know, focuses directly on the issues at hand tonight. But the courts have typically aligned the attempt application statute in determining that the unreasonable regulation of religious structures. So the language in some of these decisions, and strangely enough, two cases involved in not public, um, use terms such as judges should not interpret whether an inclusion of a particular architectural feature is, quote, necessary for a particular religion. And the town should not require a religious organization to apply a special permit to obtain a building permit to construct things like a ball field, snack bar, and lighting, but change the use of existing buildings to classrooms. So essentially what they said was that, you know, in, in Massachusetts, come down to the determination of what is being proposed is the primary function of the construction of this particular project. And that grant and that gravel removal is is ancillary there to not part of the actual process, which is precisely what is before you tonight. In my reading of both federal and state law, it makes it clear that the Special grant, Permit Granting Authority has limited discretion in that regard. It must make a clear determination that the gravel removal is the primary purpose of the project. And then it could decide, in that event, if you made the decision that this project is being built just to remove gravel, mining as some of the appointments have called it, then you could decide that it's inappropriate and should be regulated. But short of that, I think that reaching that conclusion would be an extreme hurdle to overcome these circumstances. For example, I think that the construction of this church will cost somewhere, I don't know, maybe 10 times whatever the value of that gravel is. So even if the gravel is worth, you know, whatever number you want to associate with it, the construction of this church is going to cost 
somewhere or ten times of that. So we can't associate the construction of the church as an independent mining operation for the sole purpose of making money. It just doesn't work in this particular scenario. It's not even close. And unlike the case um, which was argued by my opponents in their number, where there was the, the old colony case where the Boy Scouts you know, attempted to build a cranberry bog, um, and as part of that, had a snack bar operation, but the ratio between the money and volume they would receive from the excavation of the bog far exceeded that of what they would ever receive in return from the snack bar concession stand. That's not this case at all. Um, the opponents have also argued the theory of estoppel, um, in that the special permit um, components are stopped because they did not appeal a building commissioner's decision. Um, I'm a little bit of a loss on this one. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. Um, we, just like every other petitioner before you, um, has to come before this board with standing. We have to file an application with the building inspector, and if, if we can't come before this board until the rights denied the special permit. That's why we're here. So I don't think the theory of stop will apply in this case at all. Um, and you can't get standing until he denies the application, and like I said, he says you need a special permit. We can't get here any other way. So um, I think that this project can best be identified as accessory to the principal use. Principal use um, as set forth in 26 from the bylaw in the IR district. Um, this is not what has been classified by some as an independent mining operation. Um, we can't build this structure without the removal of a relatively small portion. I call it relative because we get 18 plus acres of land there. We're talking about 68,000 approximately cubic yards um, to be removed in order to make this site um, accessible, um, make it work, design, and redesign. Um, as most of as some of you have seen the site, you understand the, uh, the contours make this a very challenging project in and of itself. Um, as the ZBA Special Current Granting Authority has a decision to grant the request of leave under 2026, the ZBA has the ability to waive or modify dimensional and other requirements, which of course we have requested in our application. I would also suggest that everything about this project and the request of relief is reasonable, <coughs> even without the afforded protections of the LUPA and the Dover Amendment. The siting of this church is on, like I said, 18 plus acres, and that's of paramount importance. The design, the redesign, the engineering, all have been prepared with cognizance for building, which is least intrusive uh, to the neighborhood and with minimal visibility uh, from all angles. The removal of the 68,000 cubic yards will permit the structure to be located at the level where this low visibility and substantial buffer can be accomplished. We believe that the period of time posed for this removal, and I suggest respectfully that even though um, we went for the planning award and suggested six months, I think it would be substantially less than that based upon the calculations by our engineers. And I think that's exceedingly reasonable under the circumstances. And you will hear from the engineers as to the timing of truckloads, the precautions and measures taken to deal with traffic controls, um, staying away from school buses uh, on Long Point Road, and everything that would affect the community um, during this during the period. Um, I think the siting of the site, uh, the location of the site, the grading is of critical importance. I don't think we want to see this project uh, denied the, the ability to remove the gravel and having to build this at a higher level. Um, it becomes a safety concern, it becomes a visibility concern for everybody around. Um, and I think that it's most important that we acknowledge that as well as all the other um, issues that I've referenced so far. Um, a couple other things to, um, to mention. Um, 
The ZBA has the ability to waive or modify conventional other requirements, as you all know, uh, but to further reduce the earth work cuts, the parking areas and recreational fields have been located in an area to avoid higher elevations and hills on the site. And as we get into the architectural presentation and the engineering presentation, you'll see the parking areas um, have been graded to slope up away from the building, which reduces the excavation cuts on the site, graded the recreation field, is terraced at a much higher elevation in the building, the parking areas, thereby, thereby reducing further excavation cuts on the site. As it relates to the Aquin Protection District, um, a special permit, as you know, is required under Section 2061, number 13, parking more than 200 vehicles. Parking plan is essential to this particular project um, for a number of reasons, not the least of which is safety. Um, if you don't have ample parking um, and cover against 10 services, um, we're going to end up having people parking on Joshua's Way and maybe try, trying to squeeze cars you know, along our road. So I think it's particularly important that we recognize the parking situation um, is relevant, important, and makes really good sense to this particular project. We want everybody off the road, off Joshua's Way, and in a parking lot. This property is also located in Area 3 of the uh, Energy Protection District, which is by I'm sure you all are aware that these restricted for all of that protection zones. It only applies to surface waters, recreational areas. It is not something which is a constraint factor to, to the municipal water supply. And by way of comparison, I believe there are allowed uses in this particular area of things like auto repairs and storage of gasoline and, 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 and other things which are far more dangerous and intrusive than parking cars and our church being located there. Um, I think if I recall the uh, plans correctly, um, I think we're something like 2,000 feet from the closest um, African Protection District area. So it, I mean, arguably, we shouldn't even need relief from that particular um, bylaw. Um, there's a number of other things which have been presented by opponents at the planning board stage. Um, the Wildlands Trust um, appeared and suggested that we fence the entire perimeter to protect them from um, various things such as um, you know, ATV vehicles and stuff. I mean, that becomes, again, overly regulated uh, to fence an entire property, which is, if you've seen the site and the project, and if you haven't, you will see um, it's wooded entirely in the back of the project, um, which abuts the Wildlands Trust area, which goes then back to the TCIS property. Um, there's no evidence to um, suggest that there'd be any issues with people trespassing on, on our property and accessing the Wildlands Trust property. If it happens, I mean, it's a trespass. It's not, not an issue we can regulate reasonably. Um, so in general, I guess if this project um, was not subject to the Dover Amendment or, or the federal guidelines or the loop box, I think we still need or exceed all the requirements for any other building associated with the premises and covered by Section 2071C. Um, you will see that the traffic study presented will indicate um, stopping site distances in both directions being well addressed, 75 to 80 percent of the site reforested with native species, um, building the height requirements. Um, the design exceeds the requirements for lot size, lot coverage, and open space, um, and obviously lighting will have to be compliant with 2074. Um, that is the extent of my presentation. I apologize for exceeding what I thought was going to be brief, but um, in any event, um, I would like to reserve my right to address um, the board again after hearing the opposition if I feel it's appropriate. And at this point, I'll turn this over to our architectural firm and uh, Glenn Trimatore uh, to discuss and show the uh, architectural design to answer any questions the board may have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Okay, uh, I'm a little shorter than he is, so testing. Is this, uh, this working? Would, would you, because it's being recorded, would you identify yourself? Sure. Um, Glenn Trimatore. Uh, I'm the CEO of Church Development Services, and we provide architectural 